Okay. Uh, so what we are going to discuss today is simple cubic lattice. So simple cubic lattice is one of the 14 Brevoise lattices. 14 Brevoise lattice is possible in three dimension. So what is a simple cubic lattice? That if you have the arrangement of atoms in a crystal in such a fashion that uh, you can assume those atoms or ions to be placed at the corner of eight corners of a cube. And if this pattern is repeated in all three dimension, then you generate a simple cubic lattice. So what is the effective number of atoms in the simple cubic lattice? Uh, find out the effective number of atoms in the unit cell of uh, simple cubic lattice. So this what we have drawn is a one unit cell of the simple cubic lattice. So we would like to find out what is the effective number of effective number of uh, atoms in unit cell of simple cubic. So now we see that uh, I, I just I have just explained that this this pattern of arranging the atoms or ions at the corner of the cube has to be repeated in all three dimensions. So what we get is something of this like kind of if I wish to draw the same in the two dimensions or so something that looks like this. And uh, similarly, there will be other two cubes uh, on the uh, upper side, which will be can be drawn like this. Okay, so there will be eight atoms at the corners of this cubes like this. So this is the picture that I've drawn in two dimension, right? So while uh, this in actuality, in in reality, uh, this pattern is repeated in all three dimensions. So what is suppose I focus my attention on a particular atom out of these uh, atoms which I have just drawn. So let me focus my attention on this particular atom which I have uh, colored with red. So this particular atom in this 2D picture is being shared by four cubes right now. But uh, remember I have said that this pattern has to be repeated in three dimensions. So if I repeat in the third dimension as well, so that I can put exactly four cubes on top of these four cubes. So in that case, one single red atom, uh, or in fact every other atom as well, will be shared by exactly eight cubes. So what we have concluded with this discussion is that each single atom is shared by eight cubes, eight identical cubes because all these cubes are identical. They, they are the unit cell. So, so it, in other words, the effective contribution, the effective contribution of one single atom To one single unit cell will be 1 by 8 of its volume of the volume of one atom okay so there is another way of looking at it which is uh, mathematical because we know that in cube we have uh, these faces so let me draw the cube again just to make the uh, this is the other way of looking at the same thing. Uh, for example, I have this cube and uh, uh, this angle is 90 degree here. Okay. Every angle, uh, this angle is also 90. Uh, this angle is also 90. But uh, let me focus on this O um, point where this atom is situated, for example. And uh, what I'm saying is that this angle is 90 degrees. So, uh, in if we talk in about three dimension, the solid total solid angle is solid angle in three dimension in total is four pi. Okay, so the effective contribution can also be calculated mathematically. Effective contribution of uh, one single atom can also be calculated in this fashion that the four pi 
uh, so this pi by 2 angle, the 90 degree angle that we have, so this atom will contribute to this cube pi by 2 divided by 4 pi, which means 1 over 8th contribution. So this is another way of looking at it. So in totality, there are 8 atoms at the 8th corner of uh, the cube in the unit cell. So the total effective number, total effective number of atoms in simple cubic unit cell is equal to 8 into 1 over 8, that's it, 1. So what we conclude that the total effective number of atoms in the unit cell of simple cubic is actually precisely 1. Although there are 8 atoms present at the corner of a cube, the, but uh, the effective contribution is such that, that the number turns out to be 1, the effective uh, number turns out to be 1. The second thing we like to look at it is, the second thing we like to look at is, the distance from the nearest neighbor. Okay, so uh, let me take that the edge of the cube to be A and uh, the radius of the atom that we are talking about here is let's say R. Okay, so if I um, if suppose I wish to draw the edge, the very edge that I have shown by the distance A, let me draw it here. In, in actual uh, situation, in reality, the picture is something like this. There are two atoms kept at the corner. Uh, in such a fashion that they touch each other and the length of the edge is a and uh, what this uh, what this situation tells us that this if the radius of the atom is r so we can simply conclude uh, so let me make it little more clear so there is uh, okay yeah so this is this is h h a this is h a not the earlier one, I'm sorry about that. So this is the real picture. So this is edge A and the atoms are kept in such a fashion that they touch each other. So 2R actually with R plus R is equal to A. So 2R is A. So this is the relation between R and A in case of simple cubic. Now we'd like to find out the distance from the nearest neighbor, the, uh, the every atom, how far it is situated from, from the nearest neighbor of, of its own. So if we'd like to go back to our uh, figure so uh, let me redraw uh, the cube once again so if i draw the cube again and uh, would like to see what are the nearest neighbors so uh, suppose i uh, wish uh, wish to uh, draw my attention to the this particular atom which is at origin let me call this as origin and this is my positive x axis this is my positive y axis this is my positive z axis Okay, and the other atoms are also at the corner of the cube. So what I'm talking about is that uh, well, which atom are the nearest neighbors to this atom O that I've mentioned. So the uh, atoms that are at the nearest distance uh, are the these atoms, let me number them. Um, for example, one, uh, okay, let me choose a different color. One, uh, two, and three that we can see clearly. And similarly, 3 will be in the negative x, negative y, and negative z direction. Okay, so the nearest neighbors in, in a simple cubic uh, are situated at a distance. So the, the distance from nearest neighbor, distance from nearest neighbor is actually a in simple cubic. Uh, okay, so let's next question arises, how many such nearest neighbors exist? So number of nearest neighbor. So how many such nearest neighbor exist? So we have just counted there are six uh, because one we have in positive x direction, other one we have positive y direction, other one we have positive z direction. Similarly, we'll have in the in negative x, negative y, negative z direction. So there will be six in numbers. So the mathematical way of looking at maybe, for example, if I try to assign the coordinates to the uh, this one. Uh, uh, num labeled atom, I've labeled it one, I wish to write down the coordinates of it, so it will be A0, 0, 
So one uh, coordinate is a zero zero, the other one is a zero a zero nearest neighbor, other one is zero zero a, and the rest will be let's say minus a zero zero, zero minus a zero and zero zero minus a. So these are the six coordinates uh, that of the six nearest neighbors. So they are to, uh, six nearest. Neighbors. This is uh, also known as the number of nearest neighbors that we have. It is also known as coordination number. So coordination number in case of simple cubic. As six. Okay, let's uh, move on and try to find out um, that distance from the second nearest neighbor. So, who are the second nearest neighbor? Which atom are the uh, second nearest neighbor to the our reference atom? So, we will draw the cube again once again so that things become clear and. Uh, let me draw the cube again. And okay, so um, let me take this point, uh, O at origin, this point, this atom as origin, and uh, the other atoms are also kept at the corner. And this O, o, o atom, which are labeled as O, uh, this is a reference atom, and we have the same positive x, positive y, positive z axis like before. And uh, well, if I wish to find out in this diagram that which is the second nearest neighbor atom to this uh, particular atom O, so obviously it comes out to be the diagonally opposite atom in the, in the face itself, which is uh, let me assign as 1. So O1 distance if you see is nothing but root to A because this is also A, this is also A. Okay. And uh, we have a square face in the floor, and this uh, this is the body. Uh, this is the face diagonal, sorry, in, uh, uh, of the cube uh, of the floor, and this is a d zero one is equal to root two a. So that's distance from the second nearest neighbor is root two a. All right, and uh, if I wish to write down the coordinates of this point one, uh, that will be uh, a a zero. All right. Because these are positive x and positive y, and z is perpendicular to x and y. Uh, the next question obviously arises: How many such second nearest neighbors are there? So let me find out the number of a second nearest neighbor. So number of second nearest neighbors can be found out that uh, the coordinate of one um, the nearest neighbor is a a zero so all the atoms that are situated at the distance root to a will be uh, called its second nearest neighbor so what are the possible combination other possible combination is this or this or let's say this Okay, all these uh, possibilities are there. So minus a zero a a zero. Okay, so these are the uh, twelve possibilities that we see. Okay, which gives us the distance root. Other possibilities are not there. So if you can think in physically also, the, if you uh, see that a a comma zero is here, so a minus a minus a uh, minus a minus a zero will be in the opposite direction with the some other cube and uh, similarly the others can also be found out okay oh, so we got the number as 12 so there are 12 second nearest neighbors uh, in the simple cube like so let's find out in uh, the distance from the third nearest neighbor distance from the okay, so the distance from third for third nearest neighbor we'll have to see in the we we'll go back to the uh, figure and we'd like to see uh, which atom is, is situated at the uh, distance greater than two a and uh, it can be called as uh, third nearest neighbor in this diagram. 
So all these corner atoms are uh, of the same phase or are situated at a distance, which was the nearest neighbor. Then the uh, phase diagram is becomes the second nearest neighbor, root two a, and the third in the cube itself is obviously becomes uh, the uh, the the, uh, the atom which is situated at the other end of the body diagonal. If I draw a body diagonal from point O for the atom O, and let me call it this uh, some uh, point L. So O L basically is root three A. Okay, so this is the largest distance possible in the cube. Uh, there is no uh, distance which is greater than root three A in the cube, and um, you see that they it is given to two a and there is no other distance so this is the third nearest neighbor uh, present in the cube and if i wish i wish to write the coordinate of l this becomes uh, a a a so i can uh, uh, write down the distance for the third nearest neighbor is actually root 3a which is under root a square plus a square plus a square all right and uh, if i wish to find out the number of such uh, third nearest neighbor So that would be, a, I've written down the coordinate of one um, nearest neighbor that was A, A, A. So I can make other possible uh, combination. I can have minus A, minus A, minus A. I can have all, all these atoms which are situated in such a positions that they give the distance equal to root 3A from the origin, uh, from the reference atom that we have chosen, will solve our purpose. So that will be uh, this. So that's it. So these are the eight possibilities. If you cannot find any other combination such that which gives the distance from region as root 3a uh, in, in this case. So we will have the number of third nearest neighbors turns out to be eight. So next thing that we would like to see is um, the volume of the unit cell. What is the volume of the unit cells? Pretty easy to calculate. Volume of the unit cell is nothing but the A cube, it's a cube of side A. So the volume is going to be nothing but A cube. Number nine thing we'd like to find out what is the volume of primitive cell. So, so primitive cell by definition has exactly one lattice point, and we have uh, already found out that the effective number of atoms in the unit cell of uh, simple cubic is precisely one so it means this unit cell becomes the primitive cell that's why its volume is same as the volume of the unit cell and that is a cube number 10 thing we like to find out the atomic packing fraction atomic packing fraction so atomic packing fraction or in short we call it APF that is calculated the effective number of atoms in the unit cell divided by the volume of one atom so i keep on calling it atom but in general it may be atom or ion but uh, uh, so, so this is understood so an effective and the volume one atom divided by the volume on units so this comes out to be effective number atom is one and the volume is four by four three uh, four by three pi r cube and the volume so is a cube okay so now we know in case of simple cubic we have just seen that the relation between R and A is that 2R is equal to A. So using that, I can find out 4 pi by 3 into uh, R upon A whole cube, which is A 2R and the whole cube, which makes it uh, pi by 6, which is roughly point, uh, 0.52, that is 52% of the entire volume of the unit cell is occupied by this eight atoms kept at the corner of eight cube, and forty-eight percent is uh, almost free space in the inside of cube, uh, simple cubic. So that's all about the simple cubic uh, you know, unit cell and simple cubic lattice. Uh, in the forthcoming videos, we'll discuss about more structures, more uh, lattices like FCC, BCC, or SCP, and others. So thanks for watching, and uh, see. You.